Good morning from Saigon. Now we've spent the last week in Phu Quoc, which is a Vietnamese island just off the coast of Cambodia in the Gulf of Thailand. It was so amazing, we stayed a week. And we flew in yesterday and were punched in the face with the humidity here. It's May and that means it's 35 degrees. Now it's hot, but the bright side is uh, a lot of great prices on hotels, accommodation, and also the crowds are gone. So we're staying in District 1, which I wasn't sure if I wanted to do because I know it's one of the most touristy places to stay, but it's very popular because it's close to all the sites, so it's really easy to get around. But the food, I think the best food is actually outside District 1, or most of it is outside District 1, where a lot of people live. Now, that means Today we have some errands to do. We want to go for breakfast, we want to go to the post office, obviously have some Vietnamese coffee, and then just check the tourist sites that are around here, the most popular things to see and do in Saigon. And then in the future, we're going to visit the other districts and see some food, but today we're not gonna worry about it. I think sometimes people can be really stressed about eating at where Anthony Bourdain went or making sure that they ate like the best pho that everyone says is the best. But really, the beautiful thing about Vietnam cuisine, the beautiful thing about Saigon is, there are a lot of really great places to eat. You're not going to have a bad meal. You'll be okay. So it doesn't matter where you stay, where you go. We're just going to go and enjoy the city and not worry if it was on the top 10 list of the best places to eat. It's 10 a.m. We're going for breakfast. We actually said that we were going to get up early today and go for breakfast, beat the heat, cut back for lunch, take a break. But we were just so tired when we woke up. So a lot of people either have pho or banh mi in Saigon for breakfast. Especially banh mi, you can just pick it up and go. We're going to go for something a little bit different. But it is a popular breakfast in Saigon. Even for those of you who have been following my channel for a while, you might not know that I actually have a website called Bacon is Magic. That is actually, it's been my full-time job for the last 12 years, writing about traditional food around the world. And so to have this dish, I can see it's like a fatty pork. It should be sweet, maybe a little bit sour. This pickle, I am so excited about this. And I have to say, I've been really impressed by the amount of traditional food that is actually beef in Saigon. It seems to be a really great place to eat it. And then also there's a lot of vegetarian options here. So I think for the next week or two while we're here, neither of us should have any problem at all finding fantastic food. Mm. If you love barbecue, and you like the pork ends, or it's just crispy on the end, but yet so tender. This sauce is sweet, but very savory, a little bit of saltiness on it. These little end bits are good, but also I wanna show you, you know, these fatty pieces too. I think a lot of Westerners shy away from fat, but fat is one of the best parts of the pig. I think this kam tam might have ruined me. It will be very difficult to find one as good as this. This is an amazing breakfast. Now, if you want to come here, I have listed the address. I'm also creating a guide because we're gonna be in Vietnam for one or two months. And so I'm going to list all the places that we go, all the things that didn't make it into the video, but places I loved or things you need to know or tips or things that surprised me. And here I will include uh, a link to this spot because it's not easy to find, but it's worth searching for. Want all my tips, including what didn't make it into videos? Check out my Vietnam guide for what to see, eat, and do, plus crucial tips for renting a motorbike in Vietnam. Right, that was an amazing breakfast. Definitely the best pork I've had all year. You could see that they just slow cook that pork for hours. They had different pots of it going, cooking big vats of rice because they're so popular. It was really, really good. It's gonna be tough to beat. I know a lot of people are worried about eating street food, but I actually think it's less dangerous because you can see how 
clean it is, whereas in a lot of restaurants, very popular restaurants, they have disgusting kitchens, disgusting fridges, and you have no idea because you'll never see it back there. Now you might be wondering why I keep referring to the city as Saigon versus Ho Chi Minh City. Now, Ho Chi Minh City is the name after the war. It was given to the city for Ho Chi Minh, the leader in the north. However, a lot of people here still call it Saigon, and I think that's because it's a bit of a mouthful to say Ho Chi Minh City every time you have to refer to the city. So usually people will abbreviate it when they write it, and a lot of people say Saigon here. Now, there is a little bit of debate, fighting. Some people are very angry because they have very strong feelings over what the city should be called. Now, a lot of Vietnamese wonder why Westerners are so obsessed with the war, because it happened decades ago, and certainly they've moved on. There are a lot of things to do here to learn about the war. There are museums that are fantastic. You can learn a lot. I think Saigon today is very interesting. Ho Chi Minh City today is very interesting. Vietnam has changed. And so instead of rehashing things, information that you could get elsewhere, I think I want my videos to celebrate how amazing the city is as a modern city in Vietnam. All right, so we just arrived at Book Street. This is a beautiful, shady street. It's a pedestrian street with these tall trees and it's lined with books and cafes. And so the bookstores, you can get some in Vietnamese and I think also there's quite a few English speaking books or English written books for people who live here. Um, it's gorgeous. I was looking for postcards for my nephews who are three and six and I can't find any. So. This is not the postcard street, it's the book street, so that's my fault. But I think what we're going to do is go to the post office and hope that it has a shop there. I'm sure it does. And if you want to come here, there are a lot of cafes along the street, but do a little bit of research because apparently the best cafes are actually in the alleyways, not on the main streets. Alright, there's no need to get stressed out on a hot day. We couldn't find postcards on Book Street. Also couldn't find any in the post office. They do have a lot of postcards there, but just not postcards for kids. So we just decided, let's take a break. We're at Maison Maru, and it's a place that I wanted to go to because it's a cafe, but also a chocolate shop. In fact, they make all of the chocolate here in Saigon, and they only use local ingredients either from here, so all of the chocolate is 100% locally sourced in Vietnam, or they also use butter from France. So it's a French-Vietnam kind of partnership using French technique, local ingredients. It's a great little spot because they have just lovely things like this signature chocolate drink, which is just their chocolate and milk, and then lots of different. They've got macaron, they've got pan au chocolat, they've got all of the traditional French desserts. Alan wanted to try the cashew chocolate brownie, but they've got so many things here. Mm. Oh, it's a good brownie. Brownie is 60,000. The signature drink is 90. This is a really nice break. Hopefully today we will just come upon some postcards and mail them tomorrow. So we made it to the central post office. This building was built in the late 1800s during French Indochina. It still exists today and you'll see a large picture of Ho Chi Minh at the back and then the architecture here is Renaissance at Gothic and French influence. So it's a beautiful building and it's still the central working post office. Here when you come in, immediately on both sides you're going to see tourist souvenir shops. Don't go there to get your postcard because there's so much in there you won't be able to find one. But if you head straight towards Ho Chi Minh, you'll see that actually they've got a lot of postcards that you can flip to and find the best one. So it's a great place to find a postcard and also a cheap place to buy a stamp. This is central to find right next to Notre Dame Cathedral and it's worth a quick stop to send someone from home something really great from Vietnam. Now we're up for 
we're going to the Ben Tan or Ben Thon market. I haven't figured out if you're supposed to pronounce H's yet, but it's a very touristy market. But I am going there for something very non-touristy. actually bought some bags to prepare for coming here like this side bag and I think it was a mistake I think actually it would have been better to get here because in other countries the quality is not good like even Malaysia India the quality that we saw was not great but here in Vietnam it actually seems like a lot of the bags and things you can get it significantly less price and it's good so it's two days later as I was shooting this video, I started to notice that Alan was a little bit impatient, very unusual for him, and then also a little bit confused, which is why when we got to the market, the first thing we did was get a lemon soda, but it wasn't making him feel any better, and I realized he was overheating and feeling a little bit heat sick. And so while he didn't want to stop because he didn't want to ruin the video and what we were doing, it was time to call it a day. Yesterday, he also wasn't feeling great, still feeling dehydrated, still tired. And then I wanted to share this because it is an important reminder that even him as an Indonesian from an island that's very humid on the coast, like he lives in the, along the water, can still get dehydrated, can still get heat sick when out traveling. So we are back at the Bentown Market. We are having a lime soda once again to start things off. We're going to get him a hat and we're going to finish the rest of the day that we started two days ago. So last stop at Pastor Street Brewing Company. This is a spot that started in 2014, almost 10 years ago, launching their first IPA, American style technique using local flavors. So a lot of the things that we chose, it's local ingredients, reflects local taste. Really, really interesting. Also, uh, because of their success, so many other craft breweries have opened up following this, like using and appreciating heritage with American and European brewing te techniques. So very excited about this. Now, talking about things that have surprised us. So for me, Canadian, um, I was surprised at how green Saigon still is. Ho Chi Minh City is a clean, green place now. To be fair, we've only really been in District 1, but that is going to change. Also, I have loved the food here. It's so fresh and fantastic. And the language barrier isn't as much of a challenge as I thought because, you know, people have Google Translate. Uh, if you want to know the price of something, usually they'll show you the bill or they'll have a calculator or they'll put it on the phone. And a lot of young people actually speak English. So it has changed quite a bit, very much since I was last here 15 years ago. And I asked Alan what he was most surprised about. He said he loves the food, he loves the beef noodles, loves how many different kind of beef dishes there are although to be fair we do have to ask especially for seafood dishes um, if there's any pork in it but just fantastic flavors for him as well lots of options he said crossing the street here was a surprise for him and then also you know he speaks English and uh, knows a lot of other European languages conversationally so he was also in a position where it was the first time for him where he had no idea what anyone else was saying. So we are learning a lot of the words, the good morning, please, thank you, how much did this cost? It's challenging but also fun because we love to eat out on the street. And that's gonna be it for this video. We wanna tuck into this beer and enjoy the rest of the afternoon because Pastor Street Brewing Company has two tasting rooms at their original location from here in 2014. Also a number around the city, but this one has air conditioning, so we're going to enjoy it. Join my Patreon community for more behind the scenes and exclusive content you won't find elsewhere. You can also find me on Instagram and be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. All of these things make my day. Thank you so much for your support.